Here, I got it. I got it. Let me see. Oh, shit. Is he lactating? What's up, boys and girls? I'm sure you're wondering, all wondering, how the fuck does that happen? How do you get lactating nips? Now, luckily, I'm here to elucidate and educate. So, this can happen through other vectors, but we're going to concentrate on steroidal pathways. Um, so, if you're taking any kind of 19 nor that's Nangelone, Deca, all MVP, Tren, uh, uh, M-Tren, any kind of 19 nor derived steroid, this can happen to you. And the way that happens is when you take a progestogenic compound, at high enough levels, you will start to downregulate your E2 through 17B HSD enzyme, which essentially, uh, essentially it causes a disbalance between your E1 and your E2. It prevents your E2 to converting to E1, causing this unbalance. This unbalance then makes E2 less selective, so it's less systemic and more tissue selective. This tissue selectivity can then cause localized growth of your breast tissue, gynecomastia. Um, alongside of this, due to the tissue selectivity of E2 when it's dysregulated, again through 17 BHSD, you will then start to simulate, stimulate your pituitary gland, which will then create prolactin, which then starts to cause the lactation. So you can have gynecomastia that doesn't lactate. That's generally when you haven't got progestogenic compound causing the dysregulation between E1 and E2 and stimulating the specific tissues. Okay, you can just get elevated E2, which can then stimulate it just through high burden of systemic E2. Okay, so there's two different methods there. One is through selective nature, through the dysregulation of the two estrogen subtypes. There are four, but just these two subtypes are the ones we're interested in. And that is what causes the prolactin-based and progestin-based lactation of your nipples, okay? The other one is just by blasting extremely high aromatase-based compounds or having a disbalance between your androgen to E2 ratio. So if your testosterone is really low, but your E2 is really high, you can then get gynecomastia that way as well. So you often see that in hypogonadal males. Their E2 is higher than the testosterone, which then causes gynecomastia. So I guess there are three mechanisms there. You can have androgen to E2 ratio, you can have your progesterone down-regulating your E2 and E1, as well as stim making it uh, less, making it more selective, stimulating maturity, causing uh, lactation and progestogenic-based uh, gynecomastia, and the third one just being having skyrocketed E2. So that's it for now. Questions down below. I know it's a little more complicated than usual, but it's really good to try and avoid this kind of shit. So plan your cycles well or get a coach. Maybe. Link in bio, guys. Peace.